was more important than drinking water, man. I like booty. Johnson went on to tell our crew how he used to satisfy his sexual desires, especially during the 1970s and 80s, when he was most active and prison security was more lax. When I see one, and he looks good to me, when I go see him, I say, you come here. I said, I'm telling you what, uh, now I like you, and I want you. And uh, uh, we can do it the easy way out of the hallway. So the choice is yours, right? And it was always yes. Johnson also had a warning for the new generation of inmates. They might be asking for trouble from old timers. You know, they got this thing where they save their pants past their butt. It's a style, they call it some sort of gangster style. You know, it's sexy to us, right? And see, but they were prepared for this, right? So you say your pants in her, man, somebody be up in your butt, you know? And it's just that simple. Johnson even let the lockup crew know that when he was in his prime, they wouldn't be safe from his advances either. If y'all had been in her back then in them days, and as much as I like booty, I probably felt one of y'all butts. And y'all was walking past me. And dared you to say something. I'm not no shame in my game. This is nothing that I'm ashamed to admit. I am what I am. I'm a warrior too, you know, so let that be known. I'm a warrior. Coming up on Lock Up Bra. I was uh, convicted of four counts of first degree murder. Um, my children. How the code extends to the loneliest place in prison death row. with a death sentence. Rules of any kind might seem irrelevant. But a chapter of the convict code even extends to death row. A place lockup is visited many times. There's an unmistakable feeling when you walk onto uh, a death row at a prison. Um, everywhere else in the prison is alive with bustle, with noise. They're loud places. When you walk on death row, it's completely silent. It is eerily silent. Randy Height, convicted of double murder and armed robbery, has been on death row at Kentucky State Penitentiary since 1995. We have one of the most well-behaved units in the institution. Well, you can't say that we ain't got nothing to lose. We've got plenty to lose, you know. Uh, we have uh, whatever privileges we do have, you know, that can be wiped away in a heartbeat. But that's not the only reason death row inmates are often the best behaved. Their basic behavior is directly related to them being able to say in their clemency plea that we were good guys while we were there. We didn't, we didn't create uh, havoc, we weren't violent, we weren't all of these things, and try to obviously portray the good things that they've done while they've been incarcerated. I have a hope that one day that I can be out of prison, you know, uh, even though that I hope might be small, I know that what I've done was wrong. I deserve to be where I'm at. I've accepted uh, whatever might come. What the future holds for Hyde is not yet certain. His case is still on appeal. But one day, he might take the same walk our lockup crew took when they shot at Kentucky State. Kentucky is one of the states that actually still has an electric chair. And I had asked Warden Haverhill, and you know, we want to make sure that we get a shot of, of the electric chair. So we go to the end of the corridor in Three Cell House, where, where they keep the execution chamber. And I remember he opened the door, and there was old Sparky. And it was unforgettable. This is the electric chair which is maintained by the Kentucky State Penitentiary in order to complete executions by electrocution. It was originally built somewhere in the 1900s. It's just leather and wood and metal, like any other chair. But there's this unmistakable feeling. You know 
people die there. Some of Kentucky's death row inmates can choose between the electric chair and lethal injection. That's also the case in the neighboring state of Tennessee. And when we visited there, we met a death row inmate who soon would face that decision. And as far as Daryl Holton was concerned, the sooner the better. As a convicted of four counts of first degree murder, um, my children. Throughout the entire interview, Holton spoke in a calm, coherent manner about what led to his nightmarish actions. Got out of the army, divorced my wife, had custody of my children. Reconciled with my wife, the reconciliation didn't work. And I hit her, I struck her. Um, she got custody of the children and pretty much factored me out of the picture. Then, on November 30th, 1997, Holton picked up his four children, ranging in age from four to 12, to take them Christmas shopping. Instead, he shot each one through the heart. I miss them, but, but no, I can't say that I fell in remorse. While many death row inmates filed numerous appeals to delay their execution, Holton dropped all of his. I do think that the death penalty is appropriate in some cases. And I've got a low tolerance for someone claiming that they didn't do something that they actually did. There was no factual dispute about what happened. There was none. It wasn't a question of who did it. There's no doubt. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to change my views on the death penalty just because I'm facing the death penalty. Holton was not only ready to face his death sentence, he had chosen to have it carried out in the electric chair. But to his dismay, he had seen this execution date come and go more than once. Well, supposedly they were serious about executing me last year, and supposedly they're serious about executing me this year. Um, if the past is any indication, I don't think they're very serious. And that's not bravado. Um, it's, more, it's more an issue of integrity. A deal's a deal. Back at Kentucky State Penitentiary, Randy Height made it clear he's not as eager to face death as Holton, but he's ready for it, nonetheless. I'm extremely sad for what I've done. It, it hurts me knowing that I went to the level that I went. Uh, and if there was any way possible for me to uh, be healed or, or corrected, believe me, it would be, it, it would be done. Uh, it, it's an impossible situation, not only for me, but for everybody involved, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that they're to get out of an execution, or because, like I said, I'm ready. If you want to kill me, let's go. I'm ready to go. Uh, but I think that I have something I can offer somebody, and I don't think it's really time for me to die. 